When you've been churning out blockbusters since 1923, there are bound to be some hits, but also misses. Over the past century, times have changed a lot, and what was acceptable in mainstream culture back then seems absurd to us now. And Disney Plus is reminding us just how far we've come. Of the hundreds of movies included on Disney Plus at launch, there are some that feel, let's say, out of place in 2019. Join us at The Binger as we brush away the cobwebs and take a look at all the movies on Disney Plus that probably should have stayed in the past. While we're all excited about the arrival of Disney Plus and cannot wait to delve into its enormous library of classic movies that we know and love, it's hard to do so without noticing a few things that pass right over our heads as children. Look, we love Disney and the classics are classics for a reason, but we've got to admit some of the choices they made back then weren't always the best. In fact, some are downright bad. It's okay to question things that we love and to re-examine the classics from a different perspective. Doesn't mean you're a horrible person for enjoying the movies you grew up on, but there's really no harm in looking at them through a wider lens as you get older and more aware. The thing about Disney and all of the scenes and moments and character depictions that were once deemed A-OK -okay and now make us pull out our collars and cringe is that it sparks a pretty hot debate. Some go as far as to believe everything offensive should be erased because it's harmful to huge groups of people. And some think it's important to remember that there was a time when these things were considered acceptable and that pretending they never existed does more harm than good. Whatever side you land on is up to you, but man is it impossible to ignore some of these Disney movies that really have not aged well. Some infamous ones are even being deliberately left off of the streaming service. Most notably, of course, is Song of the South. Never has a kid's movie sparked so much debate. So much so that Disney hasn't even released it in any form since 1991. They seem to be in favor of just pretending that it never existed. If you've never heard of Song of the South, all we can really say is that it took place in the American South right after the Civil War. And it yearned for, and this is a quote, keep in mind, the good old days. Before the war and before countless human beings were considered, well, human beings and not property. It's really no wonder they want this movie hidden as nobody wants to be the guy promoting slavery in this day and age, or ever. Also, if you ever heard someone say zippity doo dah, it comes from this movie. Zippity doo dah, zip Disney has also made a habit of going back into the archives and editing out some of their worst offenders, like a little centaur named Sunflower from the dreamy pastoral symphony section of Fantasia. If you've never seen or heard of Sunflower, that's because Disney wiped her from the movie in 1969, and for good reason. It's just about the most cringeworthy racial stereotype out there, and received so much well-deserved backlash that it is gone for good. Aside from those examples, Disney has made the choice to show all of their other classics just as they were. But they have chosen to add a little disclaimer in the main menu, stating that some of the movies feature, quote, outdated cultural depictions. It's a nice consideration and shows their awareness, but it doesn't take quite as strong of a stance as Warner Brothers did when they released their stock of classic cartoons, calling some of them, quote, wrong. In most cases, like with Peter Pan, outdated might not even cover it. The movie is so aggressively stereotypical and downright rude in its depiction of Native American characters, from their accents to their behaviors, and then the song hits. Oh yeah, you know the one. We're talking about what makes the red man red. Even saying it out loud just feels wrong. Suffice it to say, we've come a long way since the controversy of Peter Pan. Wait, wait, did Rooney Mara get cast as Tiger Lily in, oh, 2015? Moving on. The official Disney Plus description of Pocahontas reads as follows. Inspired by a real-life Native American legend, free-spirited Pocahontas must listen with her heart to help her choose which path to follow. They've got to be using the term inspired by very loosely here, because in the real life Native American legend, Pocahontas and John Smith never hooked up, and with good reason. She was somewhere between the ages of 11 and 14 when they met. Dumbo is a heartwarming story and a good movie, but there's a group of secondary characters that has ruffled some feathers over the years. Since the 60s, people have been claiming that the group of crows presents stereotypical versions of African Americans. and. 
This claim is backed up by the fact that the leader of the Crows was originally named Jim Crow. An insensitive choice, to say the very least. Dumbo is one of the movies that Disney has stamped as, quote, outdated, as if calling an African-American stereotype Jim Crow is all right in one time period, but not in another. When you look past the iconic spaghetti scene, there's lots to be uncomfortable about in this movie. Pretty much every animal character in the movie is a sloppy stereotype of some nationality. There's German, Italian, Scottish, and even Cockney. We could be charitable and let this slide because they do caricature pretty much everyone. But then there's a pair of cats who refer not to a specific country, but just Asia. The Siamese cats are named Sai and Am, a nod to the former name of Thailand. But there's nothing specifically Thai about these two cats. Believe it or not, that's not the only time Disney reached for the low-hanging Siamese cat fruit. This time is just one cat playing the piano with two pairs of chopsticks and shouting the phrase, fortune cookie always wrong. This is one, offensive, and two, simply not true. Fortune cookies are so vague that they're often right. The first thing that comes up when you talk about Aladdin nowadays is Will Smith. The second is the fact that in the original, all the good guys are light-skinned and the bad guy is not. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but considering Disney's track record, probably not. The mostly white cast put on Arab accents too, including Robin Williams, AKA the genie. There's also that famous line in the opening song meant to situate you in the Middle East, quote, where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. Have you ever heard someone get called a lemming? It's a common saying and it means pretty much don't be a mindless follower. It comes from the widely held belief that lemmings, which are cute arctic rodents, intentionally end their lives en masse by running off of cliffs. This is not true. It's a myth created and spread by Disney with a so-called documentary. Instead of simply observing and filming the nature, the movie's crew herded the lemmings off of a cliff. Whose idea this was, we do not know. The movie is called White Wilderness, and it's on Disney+. Plus. Here's the description. Nine daring photographers spend three years in the Arctic wilderness to bring you the true life adventures of walrus, polar bears, lemmings, and vicious predators. The movie exists in its original form with no acknowledgement of the lie. Almost everyone in the Jungle Book has a British or American accent. Are we all in agreement as to what must be done? Including Mowgli and the vultures, whose accents are apparently based on the Liverpool drawl of the Beatles. Hey, flaps. What are we gonna do? But there's one outlier. King Louis, the orangutan, speaks in what is supposed to be hip African-American slang, but he's voiced by the Italian-American singer Louis Prima, whose most famous song is about Angelina, who was a waitress at the pizzeria. At the time, most people didn't blink an eye, but now people see the lazy orangutan a little differently. This one's simple. Maybe don't kiss a woman you don't know while she's asleep. Somehow, this movie from the year 2004 looks more dated than others that came out decades earlier. The mid-2000s camcorders, the outfits, the hacker who celebrated by saying game on, the ridiculous plot that centers on stealing the Declaration of Independence, the fact that Nicolas Cage was starring in an A-list movie. This was truly a different era. And you know, they might even make a third one. It's hard not to think about how far we've come when looking back at Disney's 2000 movie Dinosaur, which looks just a little better than a game for PlayStation 2. Not bad. I don't get it. Although the movements of both the dinosaurs and lemurs faces are pretty lifelike, everything else just looks a little stiff or weightless or something. There's a certain quality to the animation, a general offness that makes it hard to watch in 2019. Not to mention that it's a cheap knockoff of Land Before Time, which is unfortunately not on Disney+. When Star Wars came out back in the 70s, winning Oscars and raking in dough, everyone tried to cash in on the space craze, Disney included. So, they transplanted a crew of wise guys into a spaceship and sent them towards a black hole. These actors seem like they would have been more at home in silk smoking jackets than in the 70s space navy uniforms they wore aboard the USS Cygnus. The film is pretty much a rushed version of Star Wars with worse effects and droids that quoted ancient philosophers. But now, this is precisely what makes it so fun to watch. This is the kind of movie that you just can't make anymore. It comes from an era where everyone was obsessed with the idea of kids in adult bodies or vice versa. In this one, the late Robin Williams plays a kid in grade five 
who grows four times faster than other humans. So instead of looking like he's 10, he looks like he's in his 40s. He buys porn for his other 10 year old friends and has a mom who's obviously younger than him. At best, this is an uncomfortable movie to watch. What do you think about Disney Plus's lineup of movies? Should they have tried to keep it more current? Or is it important to engage with these outdated cultural depictions? Let us know in the comments and subscribe to The Binger for more.